just out of the topic i'll give you an example you don't need to remember this there was in the modern periodic table you have a group carbon silicon germany germanium tin and lead so we remembered it as kahe sita ji suno prabhu so this was a very sensible mnemonic we had lots of nonsense mnemonics over here as well so that using mnemonics always helps you so just let me write this again hydrogen lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine potassium calcium so you see here also the carbon and silicon that is kahe sita the they two come together but after that germanium does not come over here comes titanium and that is the problem which the modern periodic table got rid of so titanium did not match with carbon and silicon but germanium did so it brought germanium into carbon and silicon so you have to remember this table and one very important thing this table is according to increasing atomic number know what atomic number is it is nothing but the number of electrons or number of protons so hydrogen is 1 lithium is 2 beryllium is 3 and so on actually hydrogen uh, actually hydrogen is 1 lithium is 3 there there ha there is a helium in between and then there is a neon over here and then that was uh, one very important thing another disadvantage of modern uh, this meant what am i saying newland's law of octaves was that it could not accommodate noble metals in it which were discovered much later i'm saying so not noble metals noble gases noble gases are helium neon argon krypton all these don't need this right now just said these are noble gases which do not react at all so these were discovered very late so that is why the newland's law of octaves even after their discovery could not accommodate them inside uh, its the periodic table so it was 1 1 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 11 like that now there is one more important question that very interesting question very interesting question can you find dobirina's triads in newland's law of octaves and the answer is yes you can find but as always right just writing yes will not do in an examination even if it is a one mark question you have to answer why you can find dobirina's triad in newland's law of octaves so you can you have to give an example 
so the example is calcium strontium and barium although i have not written it uh, till barium and it was newland's law was not valid also i mean newland did not write it up till barium also barium's atomic weight is much higher than 56 but it would have come under calcium and strontium only and that proves that calcium strontium barium had some similarity and they should be put in one group so basically one one a group consists of similar properties uh, the elements with similar properties so from these two you can just see that calcium strontium and barium they were present in dobirinus triads also and after extending newland's law you will find that calcium strontium and barium they actually existed in newland's table also and not only that much lithium sodium and potassium they already exist in newland not even by extending without extending they exist and the third which is chlorine bromine iodine this also existed in the newland's law so the best example to give is lithium sodium potassium as i said no need to go to extension of newland's laws also just give that lithium sodium and potassium as we observe they are present they are a dobirinus triad and they are also present in newland's law of octaves which definitely says that they can they have similar properties so this is all about newland's law of octaves we have a topic of mendeleev's periodic table but we shall take that up later after the modern periodic table because um newland's law is more related to the modern periodic table than than to the mendeleev although mendeleev came after newland's but let's take up the modern periodic table first and mind it although the spelling is same this is not per iodic you might not be knowing what per iodic is there is per iodic acid and per iod per, uh, per iodic acid is basically hio4 and it has the same spelling so just don't confuse it with per iodic and periodic so the modern periodic table it is a very simple it has a very simple law which says that arrange the elements in increasing atomic number you might be feeling that that's what actually newland's did but modern periodic table applies this law in a slightly different way so that the properties come together so what it does in the modern periodic table hydrogen is placed separate it is not placed it is like hanging above the periodic table so it's placed totally separate and it uh, does not belong to the periodic table then there are this noble gases helium neon argon krypton and so on then we have lithium beryllium 
and boron is over here after a long gap boron then we have carbon then we have nitrogen oxygen fluorine helium and after lithium we have sodium beryllium we have magnesium then we have another long gap i'll tell you what this long gap is for then we have aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and then neon then we have potassium calcium and here we don't have a long gap we have scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel copper zinc these are all in this space you don't need to memorize this you need to memorize only till calcium as i said and after that we have gallium then we have kahe sita ji so germanium then we have arsenic and all these you don't need to remember but just the structure of periodic table is such hydrogen is hanging then we have lithium beryllium and a big gap of 10 elements these are 10 and afterwards we continue these 10 over here so this gap on the top two what are these periods remains and so to make the elements with similar properties to come together we have to make this gap what newlands did was he did not make this gap he directly wrote beryllium then boron then carbon then nitrogen then oxygen then fluorine and then when he came to after calcium then this scandium uh, scandium came under boron and aluminium but it did not share common properties with boron and aluminium so to make for this difference we have kept this gap over here and then afterwards we continue over here and the reason why hydrogen is kept separate is that it matches with the properties of lithium and it matches the properties of fluorine i mean not just lithium it matches with lithium sodium cal potassium and all and it also matches with fluorine chlorine bromine iodine and all so there was if we kept it over here then this would feel alone if we kept it over here so this would feel alone so we kept it in the middle so that both are equally happy because hydrogen has metallic as well as non metallic properties what are the specialities of these fluorine chlorine bromine is that they accept an electron and hydrogen also accepts electron or rather shares electrons to form h2 and these give away electrons and hydrogen has one electron so it can give it away to become h plus so it resembles these also so that is the basic structure of the modern periodic table there are more periods also there are blocks periods and stuff which we will take up later so for the time being this is the periodic table